In this bag, I have 20 rosy red muscles. Hey, what's up Aquamigos? How are you guys doing today? So we have a lot to do today, but first, in this bag, I have 20 rosy red minnows that I'm going to add to the new koi pond because we have a ton of mosquito larvae in there. I already have a few rosy red minnows in there, but I don't think I have enough to deal with the population of mosquito larvae. So that's why I bought a bunch more. So let's go ahead and get those in there. So of course we have to acclimate them. Oh, there we go. All right, there we go, guys. Leave them for like 15 minutes. And let me just see if I can show you guys the mosquito larvae. It might be a little hard to see on camera. Yeah, you can see them right there. See all those? Those little black specks? Those are all mosquito larvae. And I need to get rid of those. That's why I'm adding all these rosy red minnows. All right, guys, I got them a little bit more in the shade. And uh, yeah, we'll just leave those for about 15 minutes and we'll get them in there. Check out those dragonflies, what? And while we're waiting for those guys to acclimate, I'm gonna hose out some of these brute trash cans for the filtration. And now I'm just adding water to all of these trash cans so I can dechlorinate it and add it to the koi pond. Because pretty much what's happening guys is I want to finish up the top of the retaining wall. In my last video I installed these first two concrete wall caps and I glued them down and I just wanted to make sure that they would hold. So I checked it's about three days later and they're really solid. They're really holding really good so I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest of the pond but what I want to do first is I want to fill up the pond all the way or almost all the way because what I'm thinking might happen is when I fill it up with water it might pull some more of the liner in and then I'll know exactly where I need to cut the liner and where it I can put those concrete wall caps. <laughs> All right guys, well hopefully those will do all right and hopefully they'll take care of the mosquito larva. I decided to also add some of my guppies to the pond because I felt like those 20 rosy red minnows still weren't enough and my guppies can live comfortably outdoors during the summertime because it's so warm outside. Hey, what's up Aquamigos? So it's a few days later now and I have some updates for you guys. So as you can see, I finally finished filling the pond up all the way. Check that out. And I can't remember if I mentioned it, but these bricks are holding really well with that concrete adhesive that I used to stick them down. So I'm going to go ahead and continue sticking more down. And if you look over here, I added some umbrellas just to provide some shade for the hot times of the day. Those really help out a lot. And as you saw earlier in this video, I added 20 rosy red minnows. I added some guppies. I actually added more guppies after that last clip that I filmed. I added another batch of guppies and they completely devoured all the mosquito larvae inside the pond. I'll show you guys some underwater footage so you can actually see. 
By the way, filling the pond up took forever. I just continually filled up these trash cans, dechlorinated the water and pumped it into the pond. I don't know how many times I did it. Oh, and one other thing over here, I'll post a video on this later guys, but I actually got a pond vacuum sent to me by the brand Vever. So I'm going to be doing a review of this really soon. So stay tuned for that. So yeah, let's go ahead and grab the caulking gun and we'll continue with the top of the wall. Okay guys, so I just wanted to mention in case anyone here is new to my channel, um, the pond liner that I have is actually a RPE liner. It's not like the traditional EPDM liner that I think most people use in their ponds. Although nowadays, um, apparently RPE liner is becoming more and more common. However, I will say that if I could go back in time, I probably would have chosen an EPDM liner just because the RPE liner is so difficult to work with. It's really hard to make folds and it's hard to make it kind of like lay flat. And as you can see in these video clips here, um, especially when I got around to the corner of the pond where there's more folds in the liner, I really had to work with the liner quite a bit to kind of get it to sit the way I wanted. And I think it probably would have been easier if I had an EPDM liner. All right guys, so I just ran out of that construction glue. So that's all we're going to be able to do for today. I probably could have done one more brick, but I thought I was almost empty. So I went ahead and just like reinforced the sides of some of these bricks. So I could probably comfortably do eight bricks with one container of glue. So. As you probably noticed, I kind of veered from the original plan because I came to a very quick realization once I got to this brick right here. One thing I noticed is that the wall is not 100% even all the way around. As you'll see right here, you know, we do have a bit of a shift in the height right there. And then the other thing is, I thought I was going to originally, I thought I was going to be able to cut these bricks and then kind of fit them in better. But I realized that first of all, that would take a lot longer. Second of all, it would be really hard to make those cuts because if I am off at all on those cuts, it's going to affect how much of the top of the wall that these bricks cover. It's a little bit hard to explain, but say if I cut a little bit off over here on this side of the brick, it might end like right here instead of over here. It's a little hard to explain, but I hope that makes sense. On top of that, I'm not a huge fan of how the bricks look on the top of the wall. I mean, it doesn't look terrible, but I definitely definitely think it would look better if I do go ahead and finish the entire wall with the same stucco finish that I did for the side of the wall. So just imagine this stucco finish going up and over so it all just looks like one solid stucco wall instead of a stucco wall with wall toppers on top of it. And then on top of that, I will be able to smoothen out these ridges so it's not so obvious. And of course, fill in these wedges. But as for the bricks themselves, they will sit directly on top of the cinder blocks. So wherever there is a solid cinder block, we will have a wall cap right on top of that. When it comes to the corners of the pond, it became a lot more difficult because I had to cut a whole bunch of little pieces of liner away so that I could get the liner to fit flatter and more even. So I mean, the corners definitely were a bit more of a challenge. And then later on, you know, I'm sure these, these sides of the liner will flatten out more. Oh, and I don't think I've shown this yet. Check this out full of water <laughs> the same exact water level like we have in the pond so yeah so that's going to be cool once we get the the pump going on our filtration in so yeah i'm pretty excited for the next step uh one thing i just remembered is now that i have this pvc pipe underwater i want to go ahead and test fit the pond skimmer let's go ahead and try that real quick all right guys so this is it right here the no niche pond skimmer so basically i screw it into the two inch pipe with this threading on the bottom it has this basket inside which will collect debris and I believe this thing is just meant to kind of float up at the top um, to allow debris to enter through the top of the skimmer. We'll see how that works um, as soon as I put it in. So yeah basically guys this is going to attach to that pipe in there. I kind of estimated the height of the skimmer when I was installing that pipe but we did not, I, if I remember correctly, we did not glue that pipe into the 90 degree elbow so I should be able to just pull that whole pipe out and screw in the skimmer. But before I do that, I'm just going to clean it off really quick. All 
right guys, so if you take a look here, that top part is floating way higher than it should be. According to the instructions, it should only be floating at a maximum of like three and three quarter inches above the base. So I'm gonna have to cut another two inch PVC pipe. I mean, ours is probably, I don't know, it looks like it's probably floating like at least, I mean, a good six inches above the base. So we're probably going to have to cut a two inch PVC pipe that is at least three or four inches longer than the one we have now. But I think I'm going to wait with doing that because I'm going to need a new two inch threaded fitting because the one that I'm using right now is actually glued to that two inch PVC pipe. Oh, and really quick guys, let's go ahead and do a quick pool pond feeding. I haven't shown these guys in a long time. So it looks like that is going to be all we're going to be able to do for today. I still need to go out and I need to buy more construction glue. I'm going to have to buy probably another like 10 or 12 of those concrete wall toppers and then we can move forward. The next step after that is going to be finishing up the filtration, uh, which I'm not 100% sure how exactly I'm going to do that. I have a vague idea, but uh, yeah, a lot of work to do still. So anyways, guys, as usual, I want to give a huge shout out to the Aquamigos. If any of you guys watching this video would like a shout out in one of my upcoming pond build videos. All you have to do is go down to the comments below and leave a comment with the word Aquamigo in it. It could be anything you want as long as it includes the word Aquamigo. I'll give you a shout out in my next video. Um, as usual guys, if you did like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you went down there and gave this video a like. That would help me out so much. If you would like to see more of my videos in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button and also that bell notifications button. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'll put my handle right here and I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Peace.